Hi guys, Lily here and welcome back to my channel. So lately I haven't been as enthused as I usually have, which obviously when it comes to being a YouTube artist, that's not exactly a good thing. <laughs> especially as I navigate YouTube in order to find my place here and with the art community. I used to think art block wouldn't happen if art was my job and YouTube has started to become my job where I draw multiple times a week in order to keep content coming out for those who follow my channel. However, after about a year and a half on here, I've been hit by that awful art block feeling and maybe it doesn't seem like it because, well, I'm still working and I'm still releasing videos. So in a way, this art block is much different than other ones that I've had in the past. When I was doing art as like my hobby and I hit an art block, I'd simply just stop drawing altogether. And I think the longest I've gone is a full year, which I created nothing from beginning to end. And when I was stuck in that block, it mostly just had to do with time and interest. I had a job then that really consumed me and I put all my time and effort and energy into it. So I had just no interest in drawing after a long day. This time around though, I'm still creating, but my mind seems kind of elsewhere. I'm dragging my feet and I'm kind of procrastinating a bit, which brings me to my topic today and what I'm doing. I'm simply free sketching. Nothing here is planned. Nothing is really thought out as far as the drawing goes. I just literally put pencil to paper and drew whatever I wanted with no expectations or responsibilities. And it was really super like therapeutic. I haven't done a sketchbook spread in a while and this ended up being really fun to do. And so through it, I found myself crawling out of this rut and thinking of productive ways to get out of this sinkhole. So, here are different things I've done now and in the past to get out of an art block. First one being draw with no expectations. Just throw yourself into it. Draw something you've always drawn that you know makes you happy. Make fan art if it makes you happy, or just stick to your own original character. Sometimes art block comes when we are consistently drawing for others, whether it be for followers on Instagram or YouTube or for work like commissions or Patreon. It just, it gets overwhelming sometimes. So taking a step back and drawing with no expectations can really help to ground you. Second, inspiration. This one is one of my biggest go-tos. I think as artists, we tend to get stuck in our own minds and start drawing the same thing over and over again. And sometimes it's super fun, but sometimes it can also lay the foundation of art block. So when drawing the same thing, our eyes see the same thing and our minds get bored from seeing the same thing. And suddenly we're fizzling out and don't know what to draw because we're bored. So look up other artists. Instagram is teeming with artistic talents. There's so many artists out there with their own styles and their own mediums. And oftentimes they upload speed drawings or other helpful tips. And this feeds into our artistic, uh, I don't know, souls, our artistic soul. But seriously, if you're having a hard time finding artistic talent on Instagram, usually going through your favorite artist friends list or whoever they follow will definitely lead you to tons of talent. Third, imitate another artist's style that you enjoy. So this is kind of eh, controversial, I guess. For the most part, I think the art community as a whole would give an encompassing gasp if they heard this, but hear me out. I'm gonna piggyback off my second point here again. We all get bored of the same thing. That can even go for our own art style. If you're tired of seeing it a thousand times, then switch up your style. I'm not saying if you have an obvious anime style, you should completely do a 180 and start copying Casey Golden's cartoon style. But if you did like her style and wanted to do something similar, I definitely support the idea of styles being inspired by other artists. 
So for instance, maybe my focus will be heavily on shapes and how to incorporate them into my next drawing. That's being heavily inspired by Casey Golden, as she's mentioned before, that different simple shapes often lay the foundation for her characters. But we'll find that when we start drawing with this in mind, our art will start taking on a life of its own. That's because neither of us are Casey Golden. <laughs> We're our own person with our own sort of artistic personalities that shine through regardless of how much we want to draw like her. But this sort of exercise also opens us up to creatively push through an art block. A good thing to try out is the art styles meme where you draw certain characters in other people's art style. Fourth, draw other people's art in your style. Again, Instagram is full of this stuff. Basically, if you go to the hashtag DTIYS tag, you'll find tons of pieces done by artists who hold draw this in your style challenges. So how does this help? Well, it all depends on what's dragging you down from drawing. Sometimes it's our style, other times it's our creativity where we can't think of anything to draw. So going into this tag really helps so much because now what to draw has kind of just been figured out for us. And it also brings the art community together and exposes fresh new talent to a larger audience, which is always a huge plus. I recently just hit 2K followers on Insta and in celebration, I plan on holding a draw this in your style challenge soon. <laughs> so keep an eye out for that. Fifth, games. Have fun. I think sometimes we take ourselves way too seriously and there's just so many artistic games out there that can help you loosen up. Jazza even has an app called Jazza's Arty Games, which I'm assuming are fun. <laughs> I haven't checked it out though, but I will in the future and I'll make a video of me trying out one of his games. But one game that I have done, and it was super fun, was Pinterest tells me what to draw. I did it about a year ago and you can find it here on my channel if you're interested, but I plan on doing it again soon and it's super simple. Just write down a random number one through 10. So in this case, let's say two and then type in hairstyles in the search bar. And then whatever the second option is on the results is your character's hairstyle. And then you do the rest with t-shirts, pants, shoes, etc. And by the end, you'll have a whole new character. <laughs> and it just helps with feeling inspired in my opinion. Seven, follow a prompt list. So this is kind of tricky. This can end up being a helpful tool or an absolute mental drain. My suggestion is know who you are and what your limits are. There's a prompt list I've been wanting to do for forever. It's called Build Your Own Adventure done by Camilla Rett, I believe is her username. And I'll have a link to her Instagram and the prompt list below in the description, but Basically, they whipped up this prompt list for Inktober 2019 as an alternative list, and it looks really fun. It's basically just 31 days where day one, you build your own adventure. Day two, you draw their companion or pet. Day three, you draw their room or their home and so on. Now for me, I would not be able to do this prompt list in 31 days, nor would I really want to <laughs> because I know me and I know for a fact I would burn out so quick, but I could realistically see myself developing this over the next few months during time that I do have for myself, or I may skip every other prompt, or I may do only ones that I know I would really, really want to do. Either way, this isn't a commitment of sorts, but rather just trying to put our creative thinking back on track. Eight, maybe we're just bored of the same medium. If you're a digital artist, try breaking out the pencils and paper and start drawing traditionally. Hence why I decided to sketch in my render sketchbook. I was kind of getting caught up with my digital line art lately, and I wanted to focus more on drawing traditionally. Side note, I don't think one is better than the other. I personally enjoy both. But a part of me does feel a little stale at the moment when it comes to digital art and even pencil art. I'm not a huge fan of New Year's resolutions, but one thing that I've been trying out is acrylic art. I love the way painting feels and I haven't done actual painting with brushes in forever. And I just really miss it. And I'm not even entirely sure if I'm still any good at it. That's how long it's been. But I want to start getting back into it because 
I feel it will unlock a lot of creativity within me, as well as hopefully help me grow artistically. So expect to see some acrylic paint videos coming up soon on my channel. Really excited about that. Nine, clean your art space or room. Clutter can be overwhelming, and I don't think I've ever met one artist out there who's a neat freak. Not saying they don't exist, I'm sure they do, but chances are your art space could use a bit of tidying up or some organizing. So watch a few episodes of Tidying Up with Marie Kondo on Netflix, because seriously, that lady's amazing, and then start figuring out a way to ask your own self if your place sparks joy or not. All joking aside though, organization and clean spaces make the mind feel less bogged down. And this is very true for me. I struggle with staying organized and oftentimes my personal spaces are a reflection of my own mind. Messy, cluttered, and full of anxiety. So tidying up often calms my mind and makes me feel more ready to work. 10. Sometimes art block is due to our emotional well-being. Maybe we're struggling personally. Maybe we're dealing with big life changes or something else that is pulling us mentally away. In those sorts of situations, pulling yourself away from art isn't a bad thing. Letting it run its course is sometimes just inevitable while we focus on other ways to get back to our old selves or to adapt to the new things that have come our way. And I think in these moments, taking a break, going for a walk, Finding interest in something else is what we need more than forcing ourselves to draw. And once we've started to mend and find that strength to return to art, then we can start drawing with no expectations. And so what I've drawn here are two characters. I really wanted to draw a dude. And lately I've been really into drawing horns. So I gave him those. And I don't know, a random firepower. And then I didn't want to just draw a dude, so I made a girl character too with horns. But to add some personality, one is broken. I don't know, I figured it'd be cute. So I filled the first page with sketches of these two, and then in the second, I have them hugging each other. And I'm not really a huge fan of the way the last image came out. I don't know, it seems a little bit wonky, probably because I should have done a more simplistic sketch on the pose rather than just fleshing it out in the beginning. But I really just wanted to draw whatever with no rules or just anything. In the end, I had a ton of fun anyway, and I really love these sketches. So I hoped these ideas helped you all out if you're struggling with art block. And if you enjoyed this video, maybe comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Thanks guys, bye.